The word Julian makes absolutely zero sense to any foreigners. So me and some friends were walking to a park in Seoul to go drinking. It was like me, three European dudes, four European dudes. But I remember one Dutch guy, they were all super tall, which makes me feel bad because I'm super short. But there was like uh, definitely one Dutch guy and then a couple other German guys, I think. And then we brought with us a couple of Korean people. And um, we had like a 20 minute walk to get to this park. And the whole time we're walking, of course, I'm doing all my stupid stuff where I'm trying to talk about my opinions about Korean culture and Western culture or European culture and trying to tell everyone what I think and all that stuff, right? And it's good and fun and everything. And um, there was a Dutch guy I, I was talking to specifically. And he was talking about, uh, he had been in Korea for like six months. I think he had, he had at least one Korean girlfriend, like pretty serious. And so I was just giving him my opinions of what I think. And he was telling me what he thinks and all that stuff. And then one of the Korean people that was listening, they turn around to the Dutch guy. Because we're going to the park to go drinking. So we want, we want to drink. So drinking is the topic of what's going on. And this Korean guy turns to the Dutch guy. And he says to him, he says, what is your drinking capacity? And the Dutch guy turns to me, he just looks at me and goes, what the fuck does this mean? Because even though he had been in Korea a long time, this question comes up sometimes and it just doesn't make fucking, it makes zero sense to us, okay? What is your drinking capacity? Now, I, I, I mean, it's Juliang, right? Korean people talk about Juliang all the time. People have asked me many times, what is your drinking capacity? Or in Korean, Juliang more, you know, Myeongye or whatever it is, right? And I've gotten used to it. But for us, it's just totally weird. And there's, there's several, several reasons why it's totally weird. Number one, in Korea, it's a little easier because you guys have like a national alcoholic drink, which is soju. So you guys have like a measurement, like you use feet for, or you use, you know, meters for height, you use kilometers for driving distances, you use liters for volume. And then in Korea, you guys have soju for how much alcohol you can drink, right? In America, and I think in Europe too, we don't have a standard drink. So if somebody asks you, what is your drinking capacity? We don't know if you're talking about drinking beer. We don't know if you're talking about drinking vodka. We don't know if you're talking about drinking wine. We don't know. So it's very confusing. What is your drinking capacity? Like if somebody asks you how much vodka could you drink, that maybe makes a little more sense. But it still doesn't make that much sense because there's another vagary going on, which is, um, you know, how drunk are you trying to get? What's your drinking capacity means like, how much can I drink before I black out? How much can I drink before I'm tipsy? How much can I drink before I get like appropriate, as drunk as I want to get? How much can I drink before, you know, I can't do a math problem? Like there, there's no, we have no metric by which, by which we know what you mean by how much can you drink? I mean, you have to think about it this way because I feel like sometimes my Korean friends don't have a good perspective on it. And this is kind of the comparison I would want to make. What if I came up to you and I said, how far can you walk? Now think about that for a second. How far can you walk? Well, you would think, uh, does he mean how far can I walk in one day? Does he mean how far can I walk if it's negative 10 degrees Celsius? Does he mean how far can I walk before I die? There's no way of knowing what this is because there's not enough constraints on it. It just doesn't make any sense. That's what it's like when you ask us, what is our drinking capacity? We have no fucking clue what that means. Now, we do have a kind of general idea, which is you, you could ask us, are you a heavy drinker? Or are you not a heavy drinker? Are you a light drinker? These questions kind of make sense to us because... It's very vague, it's broad, all right? You, it's easy to categorize things into big, huge, big groups because there's broad definitions and we have some feeling with it. What's weird about 
durian is it's very exact. It's how much can you drink? I could drink one and a half bottles of soju. I could drink three bottles of soju. I could only drink half a bottle of soju. I could drink one and a quarter bottles of soju. It, has, it demands and gives a very precise and exact answer. Whereas heavy drinker and light drinker just gives these two vague answers, so it's kind of easier to answer. Now, I know the, the reason why Korean people, or my Korean friends have told me the reason why this word exists in Korean is because when you're going out with a bunch of people, and especially if you don't know them that well, and I, let, me, let me slow down and say, like, Korea has just this super developed <laughs> drinking culture. In America, a bunch of people drink and we have fun or whatever, but in Korea, it's like intertwined with work. It's intertwined with everything you do. It's so weird when I was an exchange student, it's like you went to a club and it was the anything club. It was the soccer club. It was like the, the basketball club. It was the photography club. It was like the planting, planting flowers club. Any club was just an excuse to get to drinking. It was just, okay, well, we're going to go, we're going to play soccer for like an hour and a half. And then we're going to go to a sewer jeep and get drunk, right? And I always thought that was pretty funny. But Korea's drinking culture is really developed. So I think that's part of why you guys have this word. But I know the official reason is because... If you're out there drinking with somebody you don't know that well, you want to make sure they don't get too drunk. And to me and to every American that I've explained this to, it's, it's kind of adorable because for us, when we're drinking alcohol, it's like the opposite way. We get like, if I find out somebody's, if I, if I said, what is your drinking capacity? And they told me one bottle of soju. As an American, it's not all Americans, but we definitely have this feeling of like, if we're going to get drunk, we want to push you to do more and get you really fucked up and then yeah, have a really great time. Yeah, That's our idea. Whereas in Korea, it's everyone's so sweet and nice. What is your drinking maximum? One bottle and a half? Okay. And then you're drinking. Oh, be careful. I think you've had too much. You should slow down. America does not work that way. It's, oh, you've, had, you, you, you've hit your drinking maximum, huh? Let's do more. Let's get fucked up. Let's in, kind of push him into, yeah, party time, crazy shit. That's our idea, right? Now, I know that makes it sound sweet. And I know the real deep reason, I think, for Korean people is they don't want someone to get too drunk because they don't want to have to take care of them. They don't want to have to sling them on their shoulders or carry them over there or take them into a taxi and do all that bullshit. They just want to go home to their own house and not have to take care of anyone. So it's not quite as sweet as it sounds on the outside, but, you know, it's reasonable and it makes sense. And, and then finally, there's... I think there's something else that's that's underlying this all. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but... Humans in general, we want to quantify things and get a direct answer, right? That's how we do science. That's how we do discovery as humans, right? And I think Westerners have gotten a little better at trying to be more, more broad and accept things as they are and just kind of say like, like K Korean people are really obsessed with, with quantifying and ranking. So you could say, you know, who is the better drinker? What's your Juryang? Two bottles. What's your Juryang? Three bottles. He is the better drinker. Done. We, we, we can't quite do that. And because, and because of this, this quantifying and this, this ranking, I don't think the ranking is really important for drinking as much, but it's just this ability and desire and this lust, this obsession for quantifying that has given Korean people the word Juryang. So, I, in fact, let's, let's wrap it up. There's, there's the fact that you want to be nice and not get someone too drunk. There's the fact about, you know, quantifying things and, and putting them in an order. Um, to, yeah, um, there's the, the fact that Korean culture is just so heavily centered around drinking. And these are all things that are not so prevalent in America, not so prevalent in Western culture that make it so that you guys have the word Juryang and we do not have the word Juryang. And because we don't have it, if you ask us what our Juryang is, we have no fucking clue. 
So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hate this video, give it a thumbs down. If you love me, subscribe. If you hate me also, please subscribe. Um, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. Um, please leave comments. <laughs> my last video got so few comments. It kind of hurt my heart a little bit. And um, that's it. So have an awesome day.